Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Alabrande gete ba hasada bash. Krode zina hashala baru katasya daga tabando bush. Dekretos kalabrande gete ba hasada balakus. Kabrande sade bakash. Rakata bara daga toba katafari yada balada bush. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Night is a night of sacrifice. We are traveling. You see, you have to see what is more than your pain for your pain to not mean anything. Until you can see, the Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. If there is nothing set before you, you can't endure. Endurance is not generic. It is based on a revelation of something higher. They said they looked forward to a city whose builder and maker. That revelation made everything here to not make sense again. Until you see a dimension higher than what food can do for you. Until you see a dimension higher than the pain of your sacrifice. You will not have the stamina to stand. Let me tell you, sacrifice is a covenant. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Just before we sit down, Psalm 50, please give it to us quickly. And verse 5. It says, gather my saints together unto me. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You don't have to say, Lord, I enter a covenant. Your sacrifice has a voice. Lord, let it rise as a memorial. That whoever mocks your grace upon my life, let this sacrifice speak. Are we together now? These are some of the things that will make God to rebuke kings for your sake. That there is a sacrifice. There is an altar that rises as a memorial. He is a man approved. She is a woman. for the joy that was set before you. There will always come a point in your life where you will need to build capacity. Capacity. It says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, there is only one explanation. Your strength. Many believers are wonderful people, but our spiritual stamina is small. Anything just blows you and you are out of the way. God, you didn't do this and that's it. But it says, be steadfast immovable. There is a level of balance, stamina. That was one of the blessings of the men of David. Among the men of David, one of the blessings was that one could dig his feet on the ground. In other words, no matter what you do, I will not move. I can defeat you from one spot. Are we together now? Please sit down for a while. Good evening, everybody. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. 
we still get back to our discussion. These are nights of encounters. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 7. Paul is speaking, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Nine. And to make how many men? There is a grace given that when you come under the influence of that grace, you must see. I hope you understand the story. He's saying a grace was given to me. And that by the privilege of God's power, the effectual working, he gave me a grace that when people come under the influence of that grace, he can make all men see. There is a grace that can take away blindness regardless of your level of education listen carefully regardless of your level of exposure you see there are things in life that you have to be educated to understand there are things in life you have to be wealthy to understand there are things in life you have to be poor to, to understand there are things in life you have to be ignorant to understand But there is a grace that can make all men see. Regardless of your level, regardless of your background, whether you can speak English or not is not the issue. The grace has capacity to quicken your understanding. He says, and it shall make him of quick understanding. If the matters of the spirit were left to educated people, then those who didn't have the privilege of formal education will be out of God's program. If it were left only to the rich, then the poor will not have a chance. Are we together? If it was left only to the exposed and enlightened, then those that did not have that kind of privilege will not have anything. But thank God for his grace that when he pours his spirit is upon all flesh and that this grace can make all men see what is the fellowship the word koinonia partnership the sharing drinking from the same vessel of the mystery so you can partake of a mystery not just an anointing you can partake of the grace that has made a man to see and you will see the same thing the lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power we're still going to explore along power and impartation god began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power isaiah chapter 35 my assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment because until you recognize the value for a thing, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it the excellency of camel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god verse 3 it says strengthen ye the weak hands it says and confirm the feeble knees verse 4 say to them who are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, 
and streams in the desert. The Bible paints a picture of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is, is, is an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministry, it's unnecessary, it's a nuisance. All I need is just the word. But the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation. There was no one who had capacity to do God good without God anointing him. God will make a man, build that man, teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing is not the same anointing that God works with is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit. Was it not the same spirit that put Jesus in her womb? But that did not empower her. The Bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak. Their humanity was so glaring, but not for too long. At a point in their life and in their experience, they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living God. Then they were anointed and things turned around in their lives. There is no man of God who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing just being a wonderful humane human being there has to be a translation by the power of god are we together it is very very important zechariah chapter 4 please and verse 6 the prophet is speaking here zechariah 4 and verse 6 then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of god unto joshua selman saying not by might human strength nor by human power, but it is by my spirit. Excelling in your business, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to Jesus, not by might, nor by power. Getting a job, not by mouth, nor by power. Being favored, not by might, nor by power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Breaking a chain that was there before you were born. There were people stronger than you. That chain kept them there. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. You must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh. It will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirits. They diagnose the effect of their presence. But there is a word that is a discerner. It's sharper than 
any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. He hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then he says he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Every time I read this scripture, when I get to that prison part, it touches me. Who are these men in prison? Because they still walk around. Yet the Bible says they are not only tied, they are in prison. To open the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say, God, change his life. It is within my power. There is an agency that can turn your life around. That men can receive something from heaven. That stops them from being human. You can look at a man with ashes, my brothers and my sisters. And within your power, according to the measure of grace, you look at that man and say, bring these ashes. I want to give you beauty. Like an award, like an exchange. And you say, go, you've had beauty. He will doubt it until his result shows. He steps out of that place. And all of a sudden, the scenario of his chains and all this begin to change. And all that he sees is the glory of God. To give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Look how men can become blessings to men. That something can come upon your life. When you see men mourning, you don't counsel, you don't sympathize. You tell them, I see you wearing a garment. It's only expressed in your tears. Let me take that garment away. And you can give them a garment of praise. That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. God wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints. Please listen to me. It takes spiritual power to reign. It takes more than good intention. It takes more than good preaching. It takes more than a sincere heart. The days that we live in are evil days. Jesus himself Reveal to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value. Showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God. You are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longs for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking you? To see thy power and thy glory in my life. As I have seen in the sanctuary. Lord, I'm seeking you. There, is, there are things around my life that I know only your power can answer. I've tried to use human wisdom. I've tried to use certain things, but I know that I need to outsource an ability that is higher than me. Ah, happy is the man who is trusted with God's power. You will watch life come under obedience to Christ. 
But when you are not empowered, you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors. Behind every movie, I don't, I don't do movie, but at least I know a little about it. That when you are acting a movie or drama, there's someone called a director, correct? You may never have the privilege of seeing him. He is at the back scheming things. What you watch is the action, but there is a director. You slap this one twice. No, no, according to my script, you should slap him three times. That means that behind the various scenarios of our lives, there are systems and spirits orchestrating it. The disfavor, the closed door, the unnecessary hardship, the lack of church growth regardless of grace. We focus many times on the events. The events are like probabilities. They are infinite. Behind every one of them are these spirits. And the Bible says, how awe-inspiring are your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I once counseled an elderly man, very old man, and while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me. What is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. That this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion, some challenges will not let you go. Please listen very carefully. I shared with you in this place, Koinonia, about a woman who was pregnant one time. And then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her, Pastor. Monkeys. And she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey, dead. How many people have been prayed for here with HIV? Ask them how they got it. They said they came to me in a dream with an injection said this is hiv injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically that means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically if it started in the realm of the spirit it must be adjusted there it doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically some things will never change with counseling hear me some things will never change with time some things will never change with advice you will need a head on collision with the power of god there are families where nobody has risen to any level the last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got when he was almost crossing it drew him back power the power of the holy ghost jesus knew the necessity of this he said tarry in jerusalem don't make a mistake of leaving jerusalem to start anything without empowerment i've given you the lecture but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power i just gave you theory but what you are going to be seeing there oh dear had they not listened to jesus you would meet a man called bad jesus you would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer and she will show you word of knowledge that you have not seen listen let me tell you the world that is out there is not exactly ignorant it's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic you know many times when we teach like this even me i get uncomfortable sometimes because everything i say looks like a lie 
except that it is true. Hmm. It is true. It is true. Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time regardless of the prayers that were offered. And then they were fasting just like this. Lord, why is the church not growing? And according to him, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked him to go out. And then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry. And he cursed it in the name of Jesus. And it rolled like a curtain. From that time, increase began to come. There are people, every good thing you do is misunderstood. It's not normal. Her man was begging. The king called it rape. There are spirits that make good things evil. You come for somebody's program to help him. They say, uh -huh, they have come. You don't come and they say, ah, something is wrong. It's a spirit. Let me tell you, when the devil wants to trap you down, only God can deliver you. Because anything you do will lead to the same result. They box Jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble. It was not the issue of answering correctly or not. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. Listen, let me tell you. There are many things you have discussed. It's time to bring them face to face with God's power. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom. And that by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. This is what happened to Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost but not with power. And when he was done fasting, the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power. It takes power to change your situation. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life. Just because God said it does not mean it will happen. There is an energy. There is an agency behind. He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move. The power will not move until the word authorizes it. But when the word authorizes it and the power is not there, it will still be of none effect. The dynamics of manifestation is this. Listen, it is not just the union of the word and the power alone. It is that the word is what gives authority. And then the power is what manifests physically to create the change. God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed, don't get too used to these scriptures, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about as a result of the power doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing. The Bible says from morning up until night. Do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice? 
when everything failed they started cutting themselves he said pray louder maybe he's sleeping and bell could not answer them and then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice there was a time when the angel of the lord will come to the earth angels are not on the earth just all the time they will respond to prayers but there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic do you know how haman got the date to destroy israel i hope you know there was a date haman did not just say to destroy god's people carelessly through divination a spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there that means every day is not conducive for everything this is where spiritual intelligence comes in haman through divination found out the exact day the same way there are divine appointments there are also appointments of darkness i heard a man of god share a very touching story and when i heard that story it really really blessed me he said there was a lady who was about to travel she missed her flight she felt so bad and cried that she, she missed her flight only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed the family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people the name of the daughter was not there and they said so what happened she missed the flight and so she went to a train the train still crashed those kinds of people are appointed to die so it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this the devil will haunt you until what happens happens just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here is something else but then it says to appoint unto them that mourn the same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today you can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing samaria was never supposed to be delivered the prophet gave the date for the deliverance it was he, listen elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway and maybe he was just privy to an advanced information no he said by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow if he didn't say it, the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue and they will eat the child the other child that they were arguing about do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave there are many people today in the grave who had no business going there if you're a minister here please listen to me we're in the days of his power if you lack genuine spiritual power please leave ministry just quietly leave ministry you can find another ministry and help them but i'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power the distinguishing factor will be the power of god because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve paul said and i when i came to you he said remember paul was not a dull man so he was not trying to trivialize knowledge he says but when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man but upon the power of god that you carry the power of the holy spirit like a drug and enter your house with it you don't need to pray just enter and all of a sudden the foundations of your family begins to shake what is going on in this family there is a shaking what dreams are we suddenly having is because someone who represents the ark entered that house 
one week after your coming suddenly three promotions without your prayer one week after your coming a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way this is proof that god is with you let me tell you this the world is truly tired of our stories are we together now and the impatience continues to grow we need a generation of men and women not just preachers men and women who understand the power of the holy spirit many of you are seated here right now buffeted by all kinds of challenges and for many people they think that the answer to those things maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of god now there are times that you need the power of god some of you join the queue sometimes to see me and while you are talking i just say it's okay don't worry you're tired let me explain i said it's okay i know what the problem is no matter what other examples you will give is the same spirit like you tell a doctor the other day i fell down let me tell you the scenario that he said no it's epilepsy he said no let me tell you he said i found a problem he said, even if you say you fell from a bridge it's still epilepsy it's working in me it's working in me it's god's ability god's ability it's working in me working in me it God's ability hallelujah this is why we're gathered tonight this is why we continue to press listen Joshua Selman cannot be in every home. Joshua Selman cannot be in every office. Joshua Selman cannot be in every school. Joshua Selman cannot be everywhere. There is a problem if he's everywhere. You are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in that means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say ah i should come for koinonia but maybe i'm challenged financially and the rest you say i bring you good news that which is there is here here by the spirit he said this is that 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 the prophet spoke about this is it again this is that what is the problem i've been trying to see a puzzle. why because things are not working in my family and then one word one word from you will open the gates this is what god is making and it has nothing to do with being a man of god or a woman of god by the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you good morning sir and he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was working. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit bringing glory to the name of the lord as an evidence a testament of the power of god but ye shall receive power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 
after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive power. Not stories. Power. I'm a businessman. Yes, sir. Power. I'm a politician. Yes, sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. Let me tell you we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina. The spiritual stamina. The empowerment. How about wealth and increase? Remember the teaching that I did. That you want to prosper. And even your soul to prosper. The devil says no way. You choose one. You can't have both. Either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers. And you say, no, in God's economy, we prosper as our souls prosper. You don't sell your soul to prosper. The world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper. That was the exchange that was happening at the mountain. Give me your soul. What shall it profit? When it talks of profit, the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world. Like pure water and hundred naira. What shall it profit you? If you use this to buy this. The world soul. Trade by butter. Give me your soul. I will give you access to the cosmos. Is God speaking to someone? Let me tell you something. It takes the force of God's power. For things to change. The force of God's power. And yesterday we spoke about one of the keys. Let me just talk very briefly. One area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area. Death. If you remember very carefully. That the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, first instruction, give me your heart. We dealt with that yesterday. So we're switching to the next one. And let thine eyes observe my way. He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry that there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God. And it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie. And the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No. No. In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word. And he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. That the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists would chant something in front of a masquerade. No. 
No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways how restoration came. Observe my ways how speed came. Observe my ways why Satan could not defeat me. He said be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. You can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my ways. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way. The authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of God. The methodology, the modus operandi. Please listen very carefully. Things don't just work because they are written in the Bible. Things don't just work because God said they should work. Behind his speakings are his systems. Listen to me. Beyond words, you have to see the lines that connect. This is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? And then he began to explain. To make all men see. There is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken, your eyes suddenly see. This is it. This is where my family is. I've seen it. The word of God becomes for you like a compass. It shows you where you are and where you need to be. And when you have eaten and found it, it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul. Behind the results that we seek. It's not only the word of God. But an understanding of the system allocated for it. Please listen to me. Just because the anointing produced result in an area. Does not mean it will produce result in an area. The anointing flow through the channel of your understanding to produce that result. And so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding. Imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water. And then you have a host. You can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered. What waters the garden is not the host. But without the host, the water will not reach the garden. That host is your understanding. That is the basis of your faith. Faith is the confidence that you get based on God and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence. It comes through understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. And he breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. We need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have dished mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. 
One of the strange mystery, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas, after praying, they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. Praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve and sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with her evil and wicked mother. Who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries are located for the results that you seek? Praise. 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 In a dance. Not in a complaint. Praise in a dance. Ah, madam, you're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise in a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. No. When you want to enforce the value system, of God over a spiritual climate. The mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, she said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Huh. The mystery of your seed. Now, I know that it may have been abused here and there, but very few believers understand the power of, of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension and you can connect a seed to your faith. Huh? 
and smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. And in one week, it didn't pass seven days, God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery that you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration, it does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible, it was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head, whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, no matter what it was, the moment the prophetic came, then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. It's not just about power, power fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head, it doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. When you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water board's assignment to know where your head is or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is. It's their assignment to release water. It's your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body. So the situation happening with you in that bathroom, the water board is not aware. There was something about the way you turned the whole thing and it's not reaching you. Understanding gives value to power. Most people have power, but they don't have understanding. So it cannot be coordinated to produce results. We like power because of the charismatism that comes around it. But the efficiency of the power of God is produced on the platter of understanding. There's water in a well. Please help me with this. Look at this. Every well has water. But you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it. You do that, you are going to fall down and die. The water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death. But the water was packaged in a bottle. And the bottle, the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth. That's why this is not where you drink from. Are we together? He looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle will be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. 
They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence and yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this. So I must understand the dynamics of its conversion. To know if I want fresh air, it's a fan I look for. It's still the same divine power. It is the same divine power. But sometimes it is not expressed in prayer. It's expressed in a dance. Sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance. It's expressed in agreement. Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement. It's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others. Until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow through understanding the more you have spiritual understanding the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life it matters that we have understanding i am powerful i don't doubt you but show me the understanding and i see how far the power can go my understanding is limited to the healing ministry that is the only area you will see the power of God. You will continue to fast and more power will come. But it will be directed towards that area. The day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom, you will see the power released there. It was always there, but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it. Please get what I'm teaching you. It will not do us much to just pray and pray and do impartation. And then the area where you are trusting God for, maybe it's area of speed and promotion. But the only spiritual understanding you have is for restoration. The more you pray, the more you see things being restored. But promotion, you will not get it. And you wonder, God, can't you promote? He says, my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. Where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know. And I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment. That will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Imagine with me an octopus. Right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. 
If what you want is restoration, then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor, it will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, not prayerful in his business, diligent in his business. He says she shall stand before kings. There is power in diligence. So when you become diligent, a dimension of God's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence. If you understand what I'm sharing tonight, you will see the knowledge dimension, the understanding dimension of the power of God. Otherwise, there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes. What then is the value of spiritual enlightenment if the anointing just generically solves problems? Why should you anoint me with oil? Then I study the Bible again. What am I looking for? I know what I'm looking for. I'm giving that grace channels ah those who you call wonders when you see them they are not like an octopus they are like an animal with many many hosts so almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding and the power of god you see possibilities that's what we came to do tonight first to receive more grace but second to say lord this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic will solve his problem. He would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, Sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone. Say there is a way. It may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge, but there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. Because he can. Everything God says, listen to me, listen to me. When he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy and the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces results. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened that is not allowing blood to flow because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body but for some reason the heart is still pumping blood but something may happen to your vein or your artery or something and just try to create an interference an inhibition and for a long time a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen and blood and as a result it begins to die the heart is pumping but that leg is dying so it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick. But the police station was waiting for us. 
Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances, it was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, miracles in different areas because they were prepared. I've not met a man of God that can anoint me, but while I wait, what is the key to wealth? While I wait, what is the key to speed? While I wait, so everything is prepared, waiting for the oil to come. Why did he tell the woman, borrow vessels? Borrow many. Borrow a financial vessel. Borrow a speed vessel. Borrow a, a favor vessel. Borrow a restoration vessel. If you return, pour the oil. The oil will come on the speed vessel. The oil will come on this vessel. You see, and when there was no more vessel, the oil not died, not changed, not became powerless. The oil limited by the containers. The prophet saw the woman. He said, your husband didn't know what this oil could do. Even as a prophet and he died. You can be a prophet. But when you don't have vessels, you can die. Please tell me we are going to pray. I came with a word from God to tell you. By the grace of God. This is a place of God's power. But power just resting. You can roll from that door to that door. And the power will be there. And the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life. So you will see increased prayer. You are praying again like never before. And you are saying, but God, thank you for the grace for prayer. But I said that I want something in my family. And then you fast again. And then more prayer comes. Then when God wants to help you, he will do to you what he did to Martha. Sit down and listen. Look at how Jesus, do you know Jesus did not do an impartation service every day, but he did a teaching service. His entire training was 99% teaching. And then one day, when they had created channels, he said, now wait, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost came on them, they prophesied, there was word of knowledge. There was salvation. There was healing. Because the channels were ready. My son, give me your heart. And observe my ways. Observe my ways. Observe why two people were anointed. And yet they could not manifest certain possibilities. This kingdom works through knowledge. The knowledge is not a charm. The dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power. But his divine power flows through the horse of understanding. The prophets desire to know some things. The power that was on them was enough to help them do certain things. But they were denied. God stopped them and limited them by hiding certain levels of knowledge. So the anointing could not take them far to see some things. That's why God says we are a chosen generation. In other words, people, the prophets long to see these things. They had the power, but the understanding that will allow the power to take them that far was not there. Man of God. My church is not growing. Yet people come and get healed and blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is working through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition. And that that scripture may be fulfilled. 
there is a grace that keeps if you have it you will keep money if you have it you will keep children if you have it you will keep blessings if you do not know the mystery that keeps things you will have them and lose them you can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough you can have good things and leave them apostle every time they pray i get the result but it leaves after two weeks i know what is wrong his divine power is still there but there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom you hand them over to god when you hand over things to god but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him you can't keep that which is committed to you by your power If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to Central Bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my God, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrease and levels and the anointing just like currency can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money what one million will do is not what hundred thousand will do if what you have is hundred thousand you can only buy things from hundred thousand and below if it's a card, you will not even buy 100,000. He must keep something small. So if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, Sam can have 10 problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Sam has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three, delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? Demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Sam lists all these problems. When I lay hands on Sam, watch this now. The level of anointing I have will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, but you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace, anointing is not anointing, it's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed, not just that he anointed, So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I say, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He says, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter and all this will enter, but that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you, there is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes, I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, 
he brings people with serious issues. Lord, our church members. Then he brings someone deaf on both ears and who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small, not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer, but not healed. Because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings, 21 day stretch, and sick people will come. Sometimes he will not pray for some. He will leave them like that. He will continue studying and growing. One day, he will come back and say, you, come. And that will be it. I now know what he was doing. He was honest with himself. He had a system of gauging. Was he not, was he not Jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me? If it was not doable, the one called certain apostles, they were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing is not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding. Because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly. I casted out the devil out of the gathering. But this kind goeth not. He was introducing them. That there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you. That will help you do certain things. I've shared a revelation with you. That every time people fast and pray. It's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy and that fire burns within you, by yourself, that spirit will leave you. The Bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits. That's why they like water. That's why water is a major part of their habitation. Because there is restfulness there. He makes me lie down in still waters. We are going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. Understanding understanding we'll pray for higher dimensions of power but superior dimensions of sight and understanding rise up on your feet please thank the lord for the word you just heard tonight lift your voice and thank him lift your voice and give him praise we are praying Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way to a higher level. I found my way greater power. Is 
Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shala pragadiba la daba la daba. Shala pakaruta sada bradikatash. Karuda sene makura deshi adaba la daba. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Nanaka. Fill this temple. of your methodologies tired of guessing tired of shadow boxing tired of hoping are you praying shalabarakatos we are still praying look up please hallelujah listen mention the area where you need a miracle and say lord what is the understanding that connects your power to that area lift your voice and pray Mention the area. Lord, I desire breakthrough. I desire a job. I desire the spirit of revelation. I desire increase in ministry. What is the mystery? What is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area? Please pray. Embragatali katabaras. Shabaru katabara deketash. Show me, O God, like Naaman, a great captain of the Syrian army. But what is the cure for this leprosy? Reveal to me by your spirit. There is a way, there is a way, there is a way, there is a path which no fowl has seen. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. Oh, 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 
listen. Please look at me, believers. If you are a pastor here, listen to me. That is why communion service is not powerful. Because most people think it's about sobo and wafa. So they said, eat the bread and swallow the, the drink. And then they smile. No. When you understand the power, you will not even be able to hold the communion set. Understanding. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is more to it. You have done it the way you saw it. There is more to it. We are still going to pray. Father, I'm crying to you. Let my eyes draw a line between your word, my eyes, and my situation. Connect something. Show me a key. Connect a mystery. By the spirit. I need speed in my life. Open down my eyes. I need restoration in my life. Open down my eyes. I don't doubt your power. My understanding is limiting your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them and then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. For a long time, you've been anointed, but you wonder why good things leave you. And then suddenly, the law of honor comes to you. You learn that honor is a law, and that when you honor graces, it gives you access. From the lens of that understanding, you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow. I don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor. Your understanding connected you. The power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow. It's not a different power that brings healing. That is a different power that brings miracles. It's the same divine power. But the system of operation is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Understanding. These are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit. Questions that I asked for many years. What is the relationship between knowledge and understanding? Because some people choose knowledge. The word, the word. Other people choose anointing, power. And I said, Lord, there, there is confusion here. I need you. And God said, no, there's no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus in the face of your situations. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill. Even when they bring water. Have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last. And it just comes in droplets. And you want to bath. You are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine. And interface it between waterboard and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on. Suddenly the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing, but I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt, Lord, I'm a prophet, but upgrade the grace. 
have received the anointing for wealth, but upgrade the anointing a higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Pray. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. Shelamarakatabra de getich. Embre de katekatekate. Rakata barando shobra de A higher level of grace. A higher level of anointing. A higher investment of spiritual power. For signs, for wonders, extraordinary results, strange results. chapter 19 from verse 11 there are a class of miracles called special miracles a miracle in itself is spectacular but there are miracles called special miracles. And they are wrought by the hands of men, not angels. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Read on. So that from his body, this is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases departed when your handkerchief has a voice is a special miracle because a handkerchief is not a living thing special miracles it is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles no in Acts chapter 2 they were filled in Acts chapter 4 they were filled Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. I've seen the grace for wealth, but a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts. The revelatory grace, but a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor, but a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. Just a vessel and nothing more. When you're done, please take. 
the glory I'm satisfied just to see you glorify please take the stage Lord and have your way as they behold you I'm just a vessel there's nothing more when you're done even tonight please take the glory I'm truly satisfied just to see you glorified when you're done Take the glory. I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. After you would have healed, oh God, delivered, torn someone's decades old challenge overnight. I'm satisfied. Just to see you glorified. Lord, every time people say me, let it be that they mean you. Every time they say it is Joshua Selman, let it be that they truly meant to say you. Jesus, the Son of the living God. When you're done, I'm satisfied just to see you glorified. My desire has never been to be a preacher. My desire has never been to be a celebrity. No. All of these things mean absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. All that I desire with my life is that God can find a space through this vessel and bring glory to the name of his son and I'm telling you if that happens I am completely satisfied this mundane pursuit of so many things that's not it at all I sang this song from the depth of my heart it's not just something you pretend because you're on stage it's it's been my passion to see that the mighty things that God would do even tonight that it would not just be the promoting of the name of a man as inevitable as that may look but that behind all of this my desire is to see Jesus to see him glorified and his name be lifted that for me it's an honor already to be the vessel to be used by God. And let me teach you something. Please listen. If you're a man of God here, please listen. This is a miracle service. Conquer the addictiveness of fame and power. Conquer it. It's a beautiful experience to be on the other side of the applause, on the other side of the commendations it's a wonderful thing but if you do not conquer the deception that comes with that lust to be known to be famous you will never go far with God pray as far as you can pray fast as far as you can fast read the bible for as long as you can read but if that heart condition that circumcision does not happen you will never go far with god i believe with all my heart that this is a word already for someone you know most times when people see god um, doing mighty things through men 
the celebration that comes with results begins to wet the appetite of their lusts and they think oh dear let me have this opportunity and shine too and prophesy too and pray no. this song must become a, an anthem and a desire in your life and I if I be lifted up from the earth he says I will draw all men to myself it is cheaper stepping back and allowing him take his place hallelujah I will just share a few things very briefly and then we'll pray we have a lot to do but the Lord just inspired in my heart to challenge us and it's important for us to understand that God I will continue to teach us this the boundary of God's power is his word God is limited by the provisions that his word allows he cannot go outside of the scope of his word in blessing in lifting in delivering whatever it is that he does has to be consistent with the allowance provided for by his word hallelujah and so it, it matters I know that many of us are here we're trusting God to just step in don't worry just 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 calm down and lend your attention let the Holy Spirit minister very deeply and challenge you because when the Word of God listen carefully please when the Word of God is not released there is no basis for the power of God to flow are we together now the Bible says in that light is the hiding place of his power the power of God hides behind his light and so when the effulgence of that light comes then his power is ready to be released the first thing I want to share tonight is is a word of caution again to just remind us again number one that every believers pursuit and goal is to be like Christ and to reflect him to the world please listen our goal is beyond miracles our goal our pursuit is beyond signs wonders our pursuit is beyond the knowledge of mysteries and principles as powerful as they are it is important for us to understand fundamentally that our pursuit sincerely in this kingdom is number one to become like christ experientially apostle was speaking and he said my little children in whom i travel until christ be formed in you so the formation of christ in a believer and then the ability to reflect christ to the world this should be our highest pursuit so miracles signs wonders methodologies and principles deliverance healings all of these things are subsets and must remain so they are only possibilities that are brought into our lives to the end that we find the comfort and the stability to pursue this one goal to be like Christ and to reflect Christ to the world if we veer off from this ultimate goal then miracles will no longer be a blessing listen carefully prosperity will no longer be a blessing breakthrough of any sort will no longer be a blessing the value the value in receiving the miraculous in prospering receiving restoration breakthrough etc the value is in its ability to contribute to keep you at ease so that you can continue this pursuit of becoming like Christ in experience are we together it is very important because it is easy for believers to veer off now because we are humans please you have to listen to this many of us 
seated here right now and many following from around the world online we were buffeted by all kinds of situations and truly let me tell you um the human was not designed to find ease in pain so that that focus to get pain away to get everything that looks like tragedy it can overwhelm your desire to pursue christ you just want the money because you are tired of the embarrassment from landlord you want to know the principles you're tired of being laughed at and so on and so forth you want the miracle you are tired of the pain you are tired of living on drugs you know you want the job you are tired of being limited you want the child you know all of these things they are very legitimate desires but i'm saying the real value of the manifestation of the power of god is the revelation of jesus christ through it you have to understand this so all that we do here all that we teach all that we do is an attempt to coordinate our lives and our destinies together by the spirit to the end that when all is said and done more than the knowledge of principles more than the knowledge of formulas and methodologies more than physical results of breakthrough prosperity increase speed and all of these possibilities in the kingdom more than all of this our greatest pride in fact even more than purpose an assignment as it were that we become like christ in experience and then out of the abundance the richness of him that has been formed in us we can reflect that to the world whoever does that is a winner a real winner hallelujah ministries that work in very strong dimensions of the anointing the prophetic healing signs and wonders usually will need to remind themselves every once and again because the charismatism around the move of God and the manifestation of God's power alone can tilt you away from this understanding. Are we together? In a few minutes now, God is going to be touching, lifting, blessing people and all kinds of testimonies will be coming. And sometimes we have believers who tabernacle within organizations and spiritual platforms like this for many years. They never know God. They never have a personal encounter with God. Their lives do not become reflections of his possibilities with time. Although they get miracles. Although they receive impartations. Although the gifts of the spirit continue to work in their lives. Are we together? Although they will buy cars and houses and build estates although the ministries will move from permanent site to permanent site and increase and expand and become successful in as much as we know success to be but if all of these things happen and they do not point us back to the lord and help us to know him not to know what he can do to know who he is then there is a serious problem is God blessing us today? There are people who will never opt to be born again. They are uninterested in anything that has to do with salvation. They are not interested in God, but they are interested in every other thing aside from salvation. They want the healing power that comes with the kingdom. They want the fame, the increase, the speed. They want the revelation, everything that can come, they desire. But that encounter with the Son of the living God is something that... Um, even ministers are uninterested really they just want the charismatism and the reason is there is an explanation because we are humans we walk with our senses and the things that we see and experience is what we can relate with are we together and whoever is the face behind that will have all kinds of benefits financial benefits benefits of fame and influence and loyalty etc so it is it is more rewarding physically to ignore the pursuit of the knowledge of christ and pursue the manifestation of power and miracles 
if someone throws his crutches with blind eyes is open if a deaf ear opens i mean that news will spread far if you say someone was saved they say well glory to god as usual but what really happened what people mean i mean what is the wow factor in the meeting we must be spiritual enough to value the power of becoming like christ we must be spiritual enough to see the all surpassing superiority that that pursuit provides above and beyond getting things it is god's desire that our lives become a reflection of christ knowing god and having a personal walk with god is our highest priority write it down please knowing god and having a personal walk with god is the believer's highest pursuit our highest priority is not to end the family crisis please listen if you are not listening to me it's a sign that the devil is distracting you because what i'm saying is very important you will receive the miracles you will receive the signs the wonders the miracles the breakthrough this is for sure but knowing god and having a personal walk with God is our highest priority. Our highest priority. So while I receive the miracle, the job, the breakthrough, the blind eyes opening, the deaf ears opening, speed coming into my life, restoration happening, decades of barrenness vanishing overnight, infirmities and diseases living just like that more than those things please listen to me the real value is that they now take away the hindrances that can distract my pursuit of knowing god are we together why do we hate poverty not because poverty um we hate the role it plays in limiting your knowing god and becoming like him why because it takes time to know god it takes time to understand his ways and that same time it takes to know god is what the world demands of you to be able to give you financial stipends so there is a conflict you have your time it can be used to know god or it can be used to pursue wealth all through your lifetime this is why we hate poverty and then because every time you are serving the lord caesar will come i've taught you this and demand tribute when you focus to worship god caesar will come and if the way to be a peacemaker in the earth is a formula give to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god while you worship god keep caesar's coin because he's coming when he comes give him his coin and caesar will go and you keep worshiping god but the moment you cannot give caesar's tribute you will have to forgo your worshiping god to labor to find his coin and give to him caesar distracted jesus and distracted his service jesus said okay peter you have to go fishing you were supposed to be listening to me but now that caesar has come because it's a law we have to break this transmission of worship and sometimes it's not ours it's your lifetime are you getting it now so by the time i prophesy financial favor or i teach you on the principles of finance it's not just for money's sake it is to be able to keep caesar's gold and when caesar knocks the door you say carry it please i'm focusing on god and destiny your tribute is there for you the disturbance of caesar is a terrible strategy to take you away from god caesar will come as your child's school fees it will come as all kinds of wicked bills growing geometrically so to be a peacemaker is to sustain the intelligence and the ability to give to caesar what belongs to caesar and then give to god what belongs to god 
why do we expose people to the power of God to lift what is there about lifting because you cannot make impact when you are in the pit when Joseph was in the well he remained there we don't know what he was doing down there but one thing we know is that he was not making any impact he was alone when he was brought out and honored in the palace when he was there he was able to salvage his brothers why do we have to prophesy speed are we together the reason is because our, the unit of destiny is time please listen very carefully whatever eats your time has eaten a portion of your life many of us got born again late already you dedicated a major chunk of your life to ignorance and to the service of the devil and now that you are born again there is still the law of process and if you are to follow the law of process in its normal course, you will never have the time to know God and serve. So God will have to introduce, I call them systems of advantage. He will bring them into the equation of your destiny to restore time. So that in one year, God can put 10 years inside one year. And then now he can allow you to make progress. Are we together? A woman who has been barren for 10 years already she, she would have had maybe three children at least well spaced and happy even if she has one child she's making progress but restoration has not yet happened to her but when God gives that woman triplets he didn't give her children he took time and brought it back nine months and an experience that was to span nine years he brought it in nine months are we together so i want you to see every miracle and everything that happens to you with respect to its contribution or its inhibition to your knowing god and pursuing him if you remain poor like many people have chosen to the challenge there is that they will not know God and they will stop others from knowing God. If you remain weak and you are not strong, the challenge is one day your body will not be able to host the spirit again and it will leave. Because there is a requisite health condition for the spirit to be able to stay in this body. Your body is your passport to function in this realm. Not your passport to be alive. You don't need the body to be alive but you need the body to be authorized to function in this dimension of god's kingdom this is the reason why we agree with people that demonic sicknesses like cancer like hiv and all these sicknesses that don't have names but have symptoms and the pain that they bring when we agree for people to be touched it's not just showing that the man of god is anointed is a way of saying God is interested in your longevity. God is interested in you serving him. Because those things are death sentences. Hallelujah. Are we together? So I want you to see everything that you will receive tonight with respect to its contribution. When you see someone getting healed or getting delivered, don't look at the rowdiness of the process. Rejoice with that person because something is happening to that person that will grant him or her the ease to serve God now. Are we together now? Our messages must be central and eventually. Remember the formula in, in the days of Moses. There were serpents, but there was a brazen serpent that was lifted. And that the condition was that if you set your gaze on that one, you will survive this one. In any case, you must look at the serpent. You can choose to look at the one that is on the ground there or look at the one lifted. Are we together now? And that anyone who stayed there, ignoring all of these things and stayed there, that person was saved. Healing is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Deliverance is pointless if it does not lead to Christ. Prosperity, a job, increase, all kinds of miracles, they are pointless if they do not lead to Christ. 
so it's important for every one of us to get this number two the second thing i would say tonight is the fallacy listen carefully we must conquer the fallacy of trying to do what we have not become the futility of attempting to live out a lifestyle that has not been captured in our paradigm and our mindsets listen very carefully it is futile to attempt to do things any lifestyle that your mindset cannot host is not yours this is very powerful listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call it deliverance through transformation many believers listen to me very carefully now there are people who do not believe that the idea and the concept of deliverance even exists it does it truly does the only balance is that casting out a spirit or an influence as i always teach is not the end of it now please we need africa we need to hear this because um we many people do not want to go through the labor that brings transformation so that our experiences now reflect what the word of god says i can cast out a spirit out of a man the influences can leave you spirits not only stay in men a spirit can stay in a business a spirit can stay in your it doesn't have to be in and around the faculties of man mm -mm. man is their most preferred habitation but not the only habitation spirits can stay in a business they can stay anywhere anything that can have a material expression can be home to spirits they can stay in a challenge a challenge can be a body and a spirit stays there are we together now now but praying and setting you free from the influence of that spirit is only part one of your true freedom the other part is that you must be transformed please say transformed when jesus was given what we would know to be his manifesto the messianic prophecy isaiah 61 and then luke chapter 4 he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings listen carefully to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted are we together and then he said to set the captives free he had sent me to proclaim one of the versions who say proclaim deliverance there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted it is through the accurate dispensing of the word of god that means that your understanding must become fruitful to that dimension then your lifestyle follows suit are we together now it is futile to try to do things any experience you want to live out that has not been captured as a reality in your thinking believers a major part of our growth is in the realm of the mind you have to know this it's unfortunate that many people criticize any effort to transform the mind to meticulously mentor believers into understanding usually they think it is weakness a major part of the ministry of jesus was dedicated in mentorship in fact he did not finish the curriculum when he resurrected he called all of them to the lecture and for 40 days he needed to tidy up some things before he would leave their growth happened principally through his the mentorship of the word he started in matthew chapter 5 the beatitudes teaching them the ways of the kingdom this is how we function in this kingdom when they embraced it then they now made room to be empowered by the spirit that means the ministry of the holy spirit will look almost useless in the life of a believer who does not contend for transformation there is a dimension of his spirit that brings us to that transformation but the richer part of the ministry of the holy spirit is seen when we are transformed not before we are transformed 
the primary role of the Holy Spirit before our transformation is to guide us into the body of truth allocated to construct our understanding so that we reign. That's his primary assignment. And then to convict and so on and so forth. The richness of his ministry, the potentials of a man's receiving the Holy Spirit is experienced first by him and then by his territory only when he's transformed. That means if we are not transformed, we will shortchange the potentials of the life and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as can be seen in us. Most people think when the Holy Spirit comes, he just continues to transform you and then that's... No, 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 no. Transformation has an end. Are we together now? That means you should be able to attain onto a level of commendable maturity where the Holy Spirit says, now we can do business together. You have risen to a realm where I can freely manipulate your faculties to the degree to which they will allow me to express myself richly. Transformation is powerful. Many believers will not contend for transformation. And there is a consequence. If you do not contend for transformation, the, the, the consequence is that you will return back to the circle of exorcism, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty, casting out devils, temporary liberty. Remember that the spirits don't need to only come. See, listen, let me tell you. Come, um, Dr. Mecca, look at this. This gentleman can, I can speak over his life prophetically. Watch this. And within the space of two, three days, even one day, this man can receive a million naira, two million naira. Now, he has not prospered. That blessing is to help him to be able to solve the needs that press him so that he can learn the ways that prosper men. Because the devil is not afraid of the money he's held. The money is not in his mind. So he, he is not his own. It was a loan that was given to him prophetically. It becomes his when the money is in his mind. So he can hold on to that and say, Ah, apostle is powerful. And after two months, the, the futility of his understanding will abort that miracle. Are we together now? Because he does not know the ways of God allocated for the increase and the sustenance of resources. Inevitably, no matter how careful he, used that, he uses that money, it must finish and must leave him. It's not an attack, it's the law. I've taught you. Because his growth does not allow this kind of result. Prophecy routed a way of bringing it. To help him fast. But because transformation was not there, it must leave him. Now, when it leaves him, he will come back again. And say, Apostle, I brought 10,000 like that day. And I will still speak. I will say now in the name of Jesus, may God bless you. This time around, it doesn't matter how much comes. It's still the same thing. Whether it's 100,000 or 10 million, he's still in trouble. He's not free. Are we together now? So it is true that the spirit of poverty can be around this man's business, this man's life, and so on and so forth. I'm just using this as an example. Now, after I take authority over that spirit, the Bible says when a spirit leaves a man, it goes through dry regions looking for a safe place, a place of habitation. Not finding any, the spirit will advise itself. I will arise like the prodigal son and return back to my house. He's still calling the man. That means you remain just because a spirit leaves you or leaves your business does not mean you are free. It finds the house swept, clean, but empty. And then the Bible says it gathers seven others. Jesus is teaching here now. That means this is how the realm of the spirit works. And returns back to that man so that the latter state of that man is even worse than the former. And because of his ignorance, he will say the man of God is fake. The man of God is not fake. You are not transformed to sustain the miracle. Are you getting where the ignorance of believers come from? At least you, were in a, you, you, you had a house. After the breakthrough, now you don't even have a house again. And you say, ah, I don't know what kind of a reverse anointing works 
in this church or in this ministry or somewhere. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. But now imagine with me that God steps in over Dr. Emeka's life. Are we together? And then the Lord blesses him, still using the finance that, that, that I'm giving an illustration around. And this guy now, God blesses him. And he decides to say now that at least one million has come. My destiny is bigger than one million. But one million can quickly help me pay maybe my rent. Are we together? And just sort out my children now. I can't, even if I can't pay everything, I can pay for a step. I can rest. While he's doing that, he now subjects himself and says, Do you know what? I want to find out God's ways. The ways are located for the prosperity of the saints. And he begins to gather these teachings. While he's listening, do you know what he's doing? He's closing the door. This guy is prospering not when he's doing business, when he is fortifying his mindset so that the possibility for that spirit to come in does not exist again. To preach deliverance to the captives. Many believers continue to hop from prayer house to prayer house. Now, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic. I would not do that. From church to church, from apostle to apostle, prophet to prophet, pastor to pastor, in need of what only transformation can sustainably bring. Are we together now? Yes. We will prefer to do all kinds and all manner of prayer than to settle down and say something is wrong. Notice, no matter what job this guy gets by prophecy, he loses it through ignorance. Prophecy brings it. Ignorance. When the devil marks that you have this stronghold, he will no longer fight the prayer that is coming. This is how Satan mocks many men of God across Africa. Before they pray, the demon leaves joyfully because he knows he will come back. He studies the mindset and finds out that it has become a stronghold. The door has been opened and has been hinged to something to keep that door open. And the spirit says, I can stroll around. The service will soon finish. And I will route through just one door of ignorance. And I'm back to the life, back to the business. Are we together? Very, very powerful. So this gentleman, as he's transformed, something is happening to him. You will find out prophecy. Now you will see the potential of the prophecy or the prayer or the deliverance, as you would call it. It will show in his transformation. So he can return and say, 10 years ago, watch this. Once upon a time, I was poor or I was weak or I was under all kinds of yokes and all of that. Then a day came when that spirit or that influence over my life was addressed by the power of God. Comma, and then I subjected myself to a season to learn the ways of God and the Holy Ghost the more I expanded my spiritual capacity the more his potential the richness of his anointing and his presence manifested through me now look at my life I'm a testimony from here to here I never want this place to just become a place of miracles ah there's a service so let's go you will be healed. You will be blessed. I agree. But I, I disagree that you will be sustainably blessed, sustainably healed, sustainably lifted, except that in addition to the prayer and that which you will receive tonight, you must contend for knowledge. This kingdom is knowledge-based. And not any kind of knowledge. You are not at liberty to choose what you want to hear. No, there is a body of truth already allocated. You are not given the luxury of inventing what you want. It may not be comfortable to your, your status quo or whatever church or whatever teaches you. Listen, you must submit yourself to the whole counsel of God, not the one that looks pleasant to you, doctrinally speaking. If you want to stand balanced and to receive the victory, to walk in the fullness of the victorious life, then you must submit yourself to the body of truth allocated to bring you results imagine with me for instance that this were a student and then a lecturer is teaching and he says i don't like this course maybe a medical you're a doctor so imagine a very difficult medical course and then he's saying i don't like this one i like this one 
Now, you already know that this guy is in trouble. There is a reason why he's thought that, as uncomfortable as this. You have to love your future as a doctor more than the pain to settle down and say, I, I may not like it. It doesn't, I mean, who would want to touch a cadaver? Who would want to walk with a dead body? Who would want to keep giving people injections all around? I mean, these guys just inject people and do all kinds of things. Who would want to do that? But you have to do it. That's the only way the, uh, what the what's inside that? The um, drug will get into your body. There's no Bluetooth for it. It has to go directly. <laughs> Are we together? So, this guy may look cruel while he's giving you that injection. You have to choose health or to just have a temporal comfort. And you endure the thing and receive it for a few days. And after that, you are fine. This is it. It's amazing that the believers that choose what to believe, that means that, um, by, let me explain what I mean. The believers that sit down and select what to believe according to the comfort it provides are the people who don't have results. Isn't it funny? That believers who do not have results are the ones who sit down and choose and say, no, 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 no. Um, I don't like this. I like this. I don't like this. It's pride. The Bible says when you are ready to receive, there is a quality that is required. It's called meekness. That you receive with meekness the engrafted word. You must embrace the whole counsel of God to experience all of God. Are we learning? What I'm sharing with you is very powerful. This is what will give value to the prayers that we'll have. You know, Africa, we like prayer. And prayer is good. But visionless prayer that is not seen as one of the keys that connects to other keys will only continue to be a dissipation of energy, flattery in religion, and will never produce results. The value of prayer is in the role that it plays while other kingdom principles are kept prayer does not just work generically regardless of your obeying other principles is why we continue to dissipate spiritual energy and convince ourselves that based on the pain that comes in prayer god must be answering spiritual things are interconnected and the entire system must be healthy for you to experience all of God. If you choose a dimension and leave the rest. So we have people who are always praying. Always delivering something. Always casting out demons. Now please, I, I, I don't say it with, with, a, with a heart of sarcasm at all. Don't, don't find offense in any way. This way, you will never become a portrait of the victory of Christ. It will never truly happen. It was never supposed to be an endless pursuit forever. What then is the excellency of the finished work of Christ? Then on the other hand, we have those who continue to flatter themselves that just by default they are free. Oh boy. And their lives continue to show that this is not correct. When they are sick, they don't say Christ paid for my sickness. They go to the pharmacy and then they believe that every other thing is all right. The possibility of sickness, the possibility of defeat, no matter how temporal, is already a clue that victory is established in Christ from the prophetic standpoint. But it takes your engaging with God to make it manifest. And people stop here and continue to flatter themselves that they are free until they head to the grave. Are we together? I shall not die. You are deteriorating. No, no, God forbid. I know that I'm fine. You are going down. You are having all kinds of dreams and nightmares. You finish praying immediately and lie down. The spirit says, he's asleep now. Let's continue. And you get up and say, I didn't see anything. You are joking there. Until they kill you in the spirit and you wake up and die physically back again. There is something called the death of a fool. It is the death that comes as a result of assumption and pride and ignorance. We must embrace the whole counsel of Christ. If you did not prosper by default, then you will not stay healthy by default. 
you will not stay delivered by default it has to be engaged through growth they are stabilizers they provide the dimensions of your stability if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the second thing we must learn because I, I, I continue to get tired of believers again and again. It is this, if this kind of teaching does not come, the danger is that you, the man of God, who is always doing the deliverance, you are in trouble. Number one, you will be idolized. And that is not healthy for you. Are we together? Number two, you will be weary. Because even if you delegate someone and say, pray for them, they'll say, I've gone. You do your own prayer again. And you will continue. These people will wear you out. must know the truth and know it enough to set you free are we blessed i wrote something down here our spiritual efficiency as far as living in victory and advancing the cause of the kingdom is concerned will require specific knowledge of the ways the principles the methodologies of the kingdom praise the lord I think there was a time a gentleman sent me a very funny text. I know that he was just a, I don't know if he was a, a, a male, female, or he just sent me a text and said, Apostle, God has called you to be an apostle to preach Christ crucified, not principles and not systems and strategies. I started interceding for the guy because his, his life will be a compendium of pain. I guarantee you. You see, time is a revealer. And it's terrible to carry so many people in your ignorance only to find out after many decades that you're in trouble. There is a dimension of Jesus called Jesus the way. Jesus the way. Jesus did not just say, I am life. He said, I am the way. A methodology. It is still Jesus. This man who was proposing that believed that for whatever reason that the teaching of the principles of the kingdom would veer people away from Christ if it's not taught with balance if it's taught as an end to itself and not a means to an end I didn't even reply I just felt I love the person who knows maybe the person is following today I just hope that the person has grown because this kind of copycat pride is what is responsible for the eventual pain of many people where a man of God will stand and not know what to believe again. Your ignorance has been represented in every dimension. And now you stand and wonder, what do I do? You must be men and women of conviction based on the truth of God's word. Listen, if you do not know the ways of God, the primary way that we know God is through scripture. The second way we know God is through the names of God. The third way we know God is through the person of Jesus. Jesus, the Bible calls him the, the, the express image of the invisible God. And the last way we know God is through experience. There are not many other ways. These are the ways allocated. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation it takes wisdom to see the potentials of salvation in your life it says that you draw with joy out of the wells of salvation when you know god and encounter him he will expose you to his ways it is the knowledge of his ways that brings beauty and glory to your christian life Are we together? Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Thank you, my friend. Exodus chapter 6 to our business for the night now. Exodus chapter 6 from verse 6 to 7. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, Say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will read you out of their bondage, 
and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. Seven. And I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. How do you know? By the mighty act. There is an experience that I will give you that will cause you and validate to you again that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Please look up. It is not the best of God that believers are challenged. However, it is also not unusual in the economy of God that believers are challenged. Listen very carefully. It, while it is true that it is not a, the best reflection of the Zoe life, if and when believers are challenged in any aspect of their life, it is the flawlessness, the dexterity, the ease of their lives show the multifaceted dimensions of God. However, because the treasure is in earthen vessels, it is also not unusual Please listen carefully and deliver yourself from the ignorance that people continue to propose that make believers feel guilty for being challenged. God, in his dealings with men, knew that there will always be room here and there. Are we together? For the devil to seem to find a place and negate the reality of the victory of Christ. And so God allocated all kinds of systems so that if for any reason as a believer you find yourself in a predicament that is not consistent with what the Bible says should befit you when you are a partaker of eternal life, you don't feel bad. You can now begin to engage the systems allocated. Here's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions, not of a man. Many are the afflictions of the righteous not a righteous the righteous many are the afflictions of the righteous not the affliction of sinners there is something called the affliction of the righteous now it doesn't really matter how it came the most important thing is that it is there and that there is a provision next um, it says but the Lord this is your advantage Many are the afflictions of an unbeliever, but he will remain there because he does not have the Lord as his anchor. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. The advantage of the righteous in affliction is that he has the Lord who can deliver him out of them all. Out of them all. So the embarrassment is not the challenge. Listen, believers. Stop allowing challenges to make you feel I'm not a Christian. Maybe it's because I did not pray. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The Bible tells us that many are the afflictions. So it is not unusual when your prayer request is almost a notebook. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. It says, but the Lord delivered him. So God is a deliverer. He delivers. He delivers him. What is deliverance? I've taught you. Deliverance doesn't just have to do with spirits. No. It's the parting away. Separation between you and the obstacles that impede your progress. It's called deliverance. The moment a platform is created where there is a separation between you and the influences that impede your progress. Be it demonic be it mental, be it physical, in whatever variation and fashion it comes. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it is possible that a pastor can have his children go haywire. And while that is happening, rent issues, financial issues, while that is happening, maybe his spiritual life is going down, while that is happening, and he sits and feels bad, and some ignorant believer comes and says, oh dear, it's just because you don't know God your life. No, no, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you remain there, then you agree with that situation that the victory of Christ is a lie. 
that means when you find yourself in that situation the revelation of the fact that the Lord can bring you out should not allow you to sit there comfort um, comfortable are we together don't find comfort in that situation you get up and begin to press the woman with the issue of blood knew she understood that she was a daughter of Abraham the one who was took uh, you know bound she did not know but this one knew so she could not heal herself but she was already rehearsing oh Jesus should come around this place as soon as Jesus came she knew already she pressed and touched the helm of his garment never become comfortable when your life is yet to reflect the full potentials of that which comes with the life of God the victorious life your assignment as a believer is to continue to scan through every area of your life to give thanks over the areas that are now reflecting in experience and in reality the victory of Christ but then to write down and begin to deal decisively with the areas that are yet to conform to the, the reality of the victory of Christ. I love Naaman. The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. He says he was a very valiant man. So in one aspect of his life, he was doing exceptionally well. Then the Bible says, but he was leprous. And I'm sure Naaman just said, oh, at least I'm a captain. It's all right. I can live my life like that. But a little slave girl came to plant dissatisfaction. She said, oh, that my Lord would listen to me paraphrasing. There is a prophet that you can go to in Israel and you go to that prophet and this other side of your life will also come and, you know, come under alignment. And he dragged himself there, long story short, at the end of it, the Bible says he became, his body became as fresh as that of a child. Don't be ashamed of your challenges and your pain, but don't be comfortable with them either. You should be doing something, praying about it, reading about it. There's, there has, if you are at ease, when things are not going well, it's a sign that you are not a serious believer. It is true that you don't have the power as it were to, to minister healing to yourself. But you should sit down and say, look, where do you know that God is moving? Where do you know this situation? I may not have the power to change it, but I know that this is not how a home should look like. We are up today, down tomorrow. I have read in the Bible that there is favor, but I must sincerely admit that I have not seen it reflect in experience. I will continue to confess favor. I will never speak negatively, but then I will partner with God in pursuit of the graces, the places, the dimensions that will make this become my experience. That's how we walk in victory. Now, thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? And so this, this gentleman now, he knows that this is what the Bible has said about his life, that you shall be the head and not the tail. He's born again, he's believed it, but he's becoming the tail almost forever. And then he goes to read, there has to be something wrong. He doesn't know what is wrong, but his dissatisfaction is attracting the spirit of wisdom. You see that now? He does not know what to do. But one thing he knows is that his life is not yet a reflection of the word of God. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, the excellency of your knowing God is tested when you insist that your life becomes a reflection. That insistence is what the Bible calls faith. It is not the wishing, your insistence to see to it. I know I don't have a child now. No problem. I will not kill myself. Many are the afflictions. So there's no embarrassment. You can say whatever you want to say. Ah, call me a barren, well, men are not bad, no, barren woman. Are we together? Impotent man, whatever you want to call, no problem. However, I've read in my Bible that he can make the barren to become a joyful mother. So I will not just conclude and say, well, God, one day. No, 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 no. In your quietness, you say, Lord, just because I said thank you for my condition does not mean I will keep quiet. I'm thanking you because the Bible says, listen, the Bible says in everything gives thanks. It's a law. It has nothing to do with results. I give thanks out of obedience, but I insist out of faith. 
somebody sit down and learn what will give value to a miracle service tonight so that you will walk out of this place enlightened these pockets of gaps and imbalances why believers continue to mock themselves you insist and your insistence is luring the spirit of wisdom did the Bible not say through desire? Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1. Through desire, a man having separated himself, he says that he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. As your desire begins to grow, there has to be a way. We can't be begging in this family. My father is a pastor, we are still begging. My mother is an intercessor, we are still begging. My brother is a banker, he's looking like a, like a, a farmer. He's looking like somebody who... who who just packs death on the road there has to be a way out i don't know the way but i know there is a way you see it now ah. oh my lifting has come assignment listen your assignment as a believer is to keep looking at your life and looking at scripture and record what is not matching let that become your project no matter listen 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 in as much as you don't feel bad for where you are you also don't feel good for where you are you have to find the way of growing yourself into the dimension of you that becomes the full expression of the life and the power of God. So a believer who is at ease is a foolish believer because there is a lot of conformity to be done. You may be good in your prayer life, but your finances is, is rubbishing the other part of your, your Christian life. So you must stay and say, thank you Lord for the one I've seen, but show me the one I've not seen. That's why the Bible says meekness. Because you see, let me tell you this. When you have results in one area of your life, usually you would deceive yourself into believing that one result covers for everywhere. No, you have to approach every aspect of the kingdom life uniquely. That you are a prayer warrior doesn't mean you are prosperous. That you are prosperous does not mean you have character. You have to approach these dimensions per dimension. Until every one of it, and let me tell you this. The more you conform and receive results, the more Christ can be seen through you. People look at your life and they can see the completeness. They know that this is how a believer should look like. If you see me limping, I'm a human being. Human beings can limp. There is nothing to be ashamed of. The best. Are we together now? If you see me hungry and I'm not fasting, glory be to God, I'm still alive. But that's not God's best for me. Because if I'm hungry continually, I will die. Are we together? Hunger can kill. It doesn't kill in one day. But eventually. Poverty will not destroy you in one day. But you continue. The day your children can no longer go to school. You will be surprised at what you will do for money. It's true that you can say, look, we don't need a crowd. Even if it's five people, the most important thing is we are doing well. Excellent. After 10 years of five people, you will see whether you will remain in ministry or not. It is in the multitude of men that is a king's honor. Are we together? So tonight, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Tonight is a prayer of addition. Lord, thank you for this, but this area of my life, Lord, you've not visited it yet. And I'm, I'm, I give thanks. But I came for this miracle service. 
thanking you for the one you did March, April, but also admitting that my life is not yet in experience, a reflection of all that should be. Is someone ready to pray? Lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. It is not unusual for believers to be afflicted but to remain at ease in the presence of affliction is a sign of insensitivity and a sign that you do not know the counsel of God let God be true let God be true and every man a liar let God be true and every condition a liar Please pray. Shakros Kebaratushia. While still praying, let God be true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen. Listen. Please hear me. In fact, I will, I will, media, if you can do a podcast of this charge uh, and put it separately, I think people will be blessed hearing it. This thing you just had is real deliverance for someone because it's explaining to you why the devil is not afraid of you no fortification that comes through knowledge hear me please tonight is not a night to be ashamed lord i thank you for this but mention the areas that are not yet there and be sincere Listen, let me tell you. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. The Bible says, as I hear you declare before my ears, not as you wish, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Are we together now? When you come before God, this is like a threshing floor. When you go to an injection room with the doctor, if they say turn and receive injection, you don't say, ah, doctor. No, 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 no. no. That's, that's not his business. The doctor is free. You are the one who is in trouble. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen to me. If there is any aspect of your life that is not yet reflecting the reality of the Christ life, don't feel bad. Don't let it tear down what God has done. Give thanks for the one he has done. But release your faith and say, Lord, I know there is more. And I'm here tonight as a token of my insistence that my life must become a perfect reflection of all the possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Psalm 34 and verse 17. Psalm 34 and verse 17. God will only arise to separate you from the hindrances that impede your progress in life when you call. The righteous, the same righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And the Lord delivers that righteous, but it does not come by default. That same righteous, the righteous must have to cry and say, Lord, I know that many are my afflictions. I give you thanks in pain, but bring me out of pain. Bring me out of pain. Lift your voice and cry. Please lift your voice and pray. Pray like a priest. Pray like one who is tired of this dimension. Separate me tonight, oh God. Separate me from the influences that impede my progress, that impede the fullness of my destiny in Christ. 
Genesis chapter 21 from verse 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as he said. There was a day he said it but did not do it. There was a day the prophecy was still in motion. Now the time came when what God said he now did. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Verse 2. And Sarah conceived. This is the proof that God visited her. Something happened in her life that did not happen before. Something happened in her destiny. There has to be proof of something today that was not there yesterday. Lord, visit me tonight. Lift your voice and cry for a visitation. Visit my church, visit my ministry, visit my finances, visit my spiritual life. Is someone pray? And the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah. And the Lord visited Joshua Selman. And the Lord did unto Joshua Selman. One more prayer point and I'll begin to minister. Please listen. One more prayer point. Listen carefully. 
He said, tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may go and serve me. They are not just going out for nothing. Tell Pharaoh, my people need to serve me, but this slavery is a distraction. Tell poverty, my people need to go, but if you don't let, they cannot serve me. Tell failure, tell delay, tell defeat. Hali parus kabaranta kato. Tell a slow place of growth. Tell barrenness. There is a prophet who should have been born. You are stopping the generation from experiencing a prophet. Hallelujah. Now let me give you the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Listen. Anything that will give you the comfort to allow you to reveal Christ and focus on the agenda of God is God's business. The moment you bring his kingdom in the picture, let me tell you, whether you invite it on him or not, it is his business. The key to getting God's attention is to bring Christ into the picture. The moment Christ and the purposes of God is in the picture, God's attention is drawn. What is going on here? When David came to threaten the nation of Israel, it was not a threat. It was, it was not just a threat to a king. It was a threat to a covenant and the continuity of God's program. And he raised David. And David said, Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When Haman was plotting to destroy the nation of Israel, God said to kill my people so the Messiah will not come. This is my business now. Let me tell you the truth. Your challenges will remain your business oh, until you bring Christ into the picture. Until you bring the agenda of God. Lord, give me peace so I can serve you. Give me speed so I can serve you. Increase so I can focus. Kabaritata. Shalis kabaru sepediakata. Unto the God that doeth wonders. Lift me, O God, so the nations can see your name and your praise. Let the oil come upon my life. Let the anointing come on my destiny. Mention the area that must reflect Christ in your life. Thank you for this area. But Lord, I arise for this one. I place a demand by faith. I insist by faith. listen please listen to me I want you to be very sensitive the spirit of faith is strong in this place please listen we'll be very fast tonight the real revelation is what you have received now the prayer the miracles and this is something that just comes in one sweep this is the sustaining factor you will marvel and wonder what begins to happen to your life because these are the things that are bought prophecy if you don't put them in place you are wasting your time it doesn't matter what comes please hear me whether you are outside following online please i want you to listen there is a god that doeth wonders and god can arise you see the thing with god is it is the process that takes time when the word comes, the word is quick, quick, quick. You came with all kinds of prayer requests. 
and you think God will answer them moving one by one just one pronunciation and that's the end of it it's gone so we're going to be very very fast I I sensed please listen very carefully I'm going to pray for people but I sensed that one of the the major things that the Lord wants to do tonight is first the healing you see every time you see death death and infirmity go together are we together now so the healing that that healing grace we're trusting God that people who have come with all kinds of devilish oppressions but they must be free and then number two I will continue to pray this until I see it in your life I truly believe listen to me that there is a dimension of favor that the church not just individuals must shift into otherwise forget about the ease to serve the purposes of God this issue of God today money tomorrow God today argument final is, is, a, is, a, is a demonic thing you must press for these graces as we pray hallelujah father we have come again you are the God that doeth wonders. The mighty God of heaven, we honor you and we bless you. Thank you for deliverances. Thank you for healings. Thank you for prophecies. Thank you for the manifestation of your power. Lord, let tonight be a remarkable night. Shift people, shift people, shift people. Take away obstacles and hindrances from their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going, please listen, we're going to be very fast. I already see several manifestations of the angelic in this place now. Um, for those of you who are coming here for the first time, listen, take away anxiety, just relax. There is a God who is mighty. It will so shift your life in a way that will surprise you. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bring the lady under the anointing here. The power of God is coming on one lady here. We have to be very fast now. Just here. I'm seeing a strong anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Lord is showing me, I'm in a vision now, and I'm seeing chains, people's feet with chains. And the Lord is saying, this is what has impeded people from making progress. You are moving, but you are not making progress. I'm about to pray for you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just help the usher so that we are very fast tonight. I'm seeing chains. I want to pray now. In the name that is above all names, I declare by the Spirit, Lord, that anyone here under the sound of my voice, in any of the overflows, inside and outside, bound by darkness, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, right now, be free. I cause those chains. I cause those chains. Please bring them out. I decree and declare. Overflow one. I'm seeing such a mighty deliverance overflow one just overflow one i'm seeing the power of god come we have to be very fast but i'm praying now you're going to shout that name that is above all names listen this deliverance is not just for you alone some of you came and left your family members for years you are still in the same spot you love god but there is no progress i want to pray for you now at the count of three there's such a strong anointing in the name of Jesus, as you shout that name, that name that is above all names, I tell you, if God be God, then any chain holding you and holding your family must give way. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance right now. One, 
two, three, shout Jesus. I cross those chains now. In the name of Jesus. Bring them out. Shake Inside and outside. I decree and declare. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's have them outside. Ushers, you should know that, please. So that we can hurry up and make progress. Shalibros kabaruda shalakatos kebriandash. Alusha brenda gedit. We are still going to pray. I'm seeing fire. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it come on people, not just on chains, feet now. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, every overflow, those following online, this shout of the name of Jesus again. I'm seeing families, what looks like a door under chains, it must leave right now. One, two, three. I command every chain. Chain of darkness tying down people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be free now. I need a chain falling. Yeah. I need a chain falling. The Lord is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. The same spirit that delivers, that heals. The Lord is that spirit, not another. It is the same Lord that gives salvation, that heals. The Lord is that spirit. Hallelujah. I want to rebuke barrenness. Now, first physical barrenness. But then this barrenness is more than just physical barrenness. A state of unproductivity. And as I pray this prayer, many ladies prophetically, the power of God will come upon you, not necessarily because you are barren, but women stand as gates in the realm of the spirit. And God uses them to signify the opening of gates. In the name that is above all names, I declare right now, even as the Lord is revealing to me there are all kinds of barrenness in this place physical barrenness financial barrenness spiritual barrenness I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three right now that anointing is coming on people inside and outside those with physical barrenness issues God is stepping in right now and those with all kinds of related barrenness issues God is also stepping in at the count of three. I declare it right now. One, two, three. Let that power touch you right now. I release you. I release you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you by prophecy. I release you. Enter a dimension of fruitfulness. I speak it to your life. I speak it to your business. I bless the word upon you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Madam, please stop this woman for me. Madam, please come. Your life is about to change. I don't know who this woman is. From the town. Come again, man. From Sabo, from Sabo. From Sabo. I want to pray for you. Number one, please look at me, madam. The pain you experience at your back, huh?
that back pain the lord is taking it away number two god is stepping into your family i'm looking at your family and i'm seeing that your family needs a real miracle this is this is an array of witchcraft and if we don't pray it will take lives people will die like chickens but we are going to pray now i'm seeing the map of nigeria and i'm seeing kogi state kogi state the power of god is coming upon kogi state right now right now i'm speaking the power of god it's a sign and a wonder how God does this, ladies and gentlemen. Kogi state. You see, for those of you who don't know, when God shows me that, the moment I mention the state, everyone who is part of that state, that anointing, will touch them. It's, it's a sign and a wonder. It's a grace. I declare right now, whether you know your state or not, I'm seeing that map and I send the word. I declare by the spirit, let that anointing, I'm seeing fire rising. Kogi state. I command liberty by the spirit of the living God. I command liberty by the power of the Holy Ghost that every planting that is not of God associated with that territory. I call for liberty now. Now by the spirit. Mama, Please let me pray for you. I'm going to pray for you, ma. And it will be like a dream. The way God will honor you and take away sorrow from your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our mother. Honor this woman. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I declare over you in the name of Jesus. Let everything that looks like shame and reproach and sorrow over you and your family, I cast it out of your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jennifer. 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 I'm hearing the name Jennifer. We have to really... Jennifer. Where are you from? Huh? I've seen this thing before and I've announced it in miracle service. There is something called Aleku. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm seeing that name again. Where are you coming from? Where is she from? You are from Benway yes, State. Yes, we have Aleku there. What? Eh? Aleku. This is what I'm saying. Ah! I, know you now. I command that devil ah! out of her life now ah! by the power of the Holy Ghost. See, listen, the Bible says, even the captives of the mighty, the lawful captives, shall be delivered. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. Every challenge. Relative to the grace that confronts him. My friend, this gentleman, tap him for me. Don't worry, let me talk with him. Look at me. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Huh? I'm stretching my hands now. I'm seeing an anointing coming on you. Number one, the grace for intercession. Amen. Number two, the teaching ministry. Amen. I decree and declare. Amen. May you step into that dimension Amen. of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shift you by prophecy into that dimension of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside overflow one. The Lord is showing me an elderly woman. It's like you came with your daughter or something. You didn't come alone. Please, if there's such a woman, there come. I'm seeing the Lord is showing me a woman. You came together with your daughter. We have to hurry up because we're going to pray for the sick now. Mighty God. This young lady, look at me, my dear. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That's the end of it. I release you right now from everything that represents captivity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where are you coming from, Mama? I'm from seeing. Abuja. Hold on. You came by road? 
Yes, sir. Kaduna, Abuja. Where do you stay? I stay in a. Where are you from? From part of Niger. It's Abuja? The, yes. Like a boundary? Yes, sir. And that's where you are coming from? Yes. I want to pray for you. The spirit of death will leave your life and your family. Amen. My dear, this is your daughter. Is that lady your daughter? Yes, sir. I'm going to pray because this lady as young as she's seen, God is going to use her. There is a grace for favor that is on this lady. You see. Favor. Favor. That's your name. No, it's not like I'm doing an impartation. Huh? Your name is what? What's her name? Favor. Hear me, my dear. The Lord is going to turn your life. You see this lady like this? Don't worry about what you are eating or not eating. You hear what I'm saying? This lady, God is going to honor her. The first miracle God is going to do to your daughter is in her brain. Amen. Because this has been your prayer. Eh? Yes, sir. She's yes, not sir. doing very well in I school. Saw. This, listen now, let me talk to you. This lady is not a bad lady. She loves, she's a serious lady and a very good and disciplined lady. But this is an attack. I will pray for her. She will go back and you will marvel and wonder at what will happen to this lady. My dear, come, favor. Don't cry, eh? You came for miracle service. Father, the Bible declares that the memory of the just is blessed. I bless your mind. Understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. A family of four ladies, the chain of marital delay is breaking now. No, 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 it's, it's not everybody. I'm, I'm praying that this is an exact prayer to someone right now. I'm seeing, I, I just held this lady and the Lord showed me four, one, two, three, four ladies. By the power of, please, why are they, don't, please don't bring people out that have not called, please. Why are they here? Huh? Where is she from? Overflow one. Okay, this is your daughter. Come, Mama. Where are you from? Where are you coming from? We are from Quarter Two, sir. You are from Quarter Two. Quarter Two. Yes, sir. I have to pray for you. There's somebody here. When it's time to pray, please, no matter what overflow you are in, um, I want to pray for you by myself. When they look at you, they will think you are pregnant, like very evidently pregnant but you are not pregnant this is i don't know what this is this thing is just protruding like this the power of god is coming on that person and that that demonic thing i curse it by the god of heaven he must let you go now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus mama can i pray for you in the name of jesus i'm praying for you ma that everything that wants to cut short your life number one i come against it in the name of jesus and then number two i'm praying for you it's time for you to reap from the fruit of your labor in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ who is this why is she here okay jennifer what's wrong with her huh she's not feeling fine Okay, we'll, we'll pray for the sick. Ah, we have to pray. Oh. Is she mad? She's just not. Okay. It's before that she was mad, but now it's not like that. She was mad before. Yes. When uh, it has been now uh, one, let's say eight months. Okay. When she came here, so she cannot talk and uh, other like that. She used to. This, this means all the, when she's talking, so she no talk normally. Okay, we'll pray. We're going to minister to the sick. We have to, if not, we'll, we'll take all the night here. But we'll pray for her. Can she hear me? My dear, how are you? You can hear me? Yes. I will pray for you, eh? And Jesus will heal you. Because I'm already seeing this lady inside a coffin. With what I'm seeing, this lady will not cross this year. They will just say, survive by. But there is a God in heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. We have to pray. I hope they are not just coming out at random. Do we have? Huh? 
I didn't ask them to come out. I said, Protocol, you people should be able to work with the people so that we don't have. You are the one, come. Where are you from? from Paladin. Paladin. Yes. Place your hand on your stomach. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Have you gone to the hospital? Yes, sir. I've done many scans. What did they tell you? Is there? Nothing. Nothing. And yet the stomach is growing and you're not pregnant. Yes. Are you married? About to, sir. About to marry. Is your husband here? Yes, sir. Husband, come. Where is he? The Lord wants to save a big, major marital problem now. Husband, sir, come. Thank you. Eh? Please don't be embarrassed. We love you. God just wants to save you. Very little things like this can tear marriage not into two into pieces and want to want to help them. Where are you coming from, sir? From Samar. What are you trusting God for? Healing, sir. Um, God provision for the word. Healing and God provision. Provision? Yes, sir. Uh, are you working? No, sir. Did you apply for a job? Yeah, I've been applying, sir. Because I'm looking, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a letter. This is why I'm, I'm saying, I don't know. We are going to pray. This is your first time here? No, I've been coming. Okay, been, okay. I will pray for your wife first. Eh? If not, um, I hope I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. Eh? But God is trying to save you from what will make you hate someone you are loving so much now. My dear, you love Jesus. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, you see how this kind of demonic things are. The stomach is protruding and the machine is not even saying there's fibroid or something. At least if it says there's something, you know what to remove. The machine is showing that this woman is perfectly healthy, yet her stomach is protruding. If you don't understand now, you can put this innocent brother in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? You see how the devil works? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare now. Watch the power of God. Ah, the power of God. Oh, this, let me tell you, the anointing is very powerful. It's not for showmanship, it's like a drug. Just enters your system and it will rubbish anything that is not God. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, madam. Let me tell you the truth. You will not waste even if it's one day to be pregnant when it's time. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. And this, I'm seeing like a black band tied around your stomach. I lose it right now. And I release you. I set you free from this. In the name of Jesus. My friend, I pray for you. Look at me, sir. You believe in Jesus? The budget I'm seeing is very much. You have not even gone... You have not gone near halfway the budget, eh? Don't be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassing you. You need a real miracle. This one is not just a destiny helper. You need a miracle. Because with what I'm seeing that you wrote as a budget, Kai, when is the wedding? 12th of October. 12th of October. God is faithful, eh? I will pray with you. There's a prophetic dimension of wealth. Truly there is. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit surprise this my dear brother more than enough for your wedding in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare be healed right now be healed completely in the name of Jesus be healed completely your name is Jennifer okay I'll pray with you come I'll just lay hands on you all this Jennifer I'll just lay hands I'm not getting any hold her collect the child please Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, take away this reproach that I see in this family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the Lord is giving you a new beginning. In Jesus' name, please come quickly. In the name of Jesus, come, my dear. May the Lord bless you and honor you. Come. Reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming on one ushering lady. It's an ushering lady. I'm seeing a mighty deliverance. Reproach is living right now by the Spirit, whether inside or outside. I'm seeing one ocean lady. The power of God is coming upon her. Father, in the name of Jesus, let that miracle take away reproach 
in the name of Jesus Christ take away reproach you are Jennifer in the name of Jesus I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray for you my dear my dear hold her hands two of you just do what I'm asking you to do shout Jesus as loud as you can Because both of you need the same miracle and God is giving you that miracle he's terminating shame completely from your life there is I'm seeing a man here you are a pastor I know there are many pastors I can presume but who is a pastor here sir please come You are a pastor where, sir? Come again. I'm seeing, what do you have? I'm, I can't get, let him come. I'm seeing you. You came from where, sir? Benin. Benin. I want to pray for you. You have your church? I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. Stand up. You are going to write a book. The Lord is going to anoint you and you will write a book. God will use that book to bless the body and honor you too. It's a grace that I'm praying for you. Number two, sir, I'm seeing the Lord strengthening your understanding. There's a teaching grace that God is releasing upon you. I don't know you and I'm praying for you. And then I'm praying for you. You will see the miraculous in a very strange way. You may not lay hands on people like this, but the spoken word, as you are speaking, you will see God begin to honor you and things begin to happen. Can I pray for you, sir? In the name of Jesus, I release you into these dimensions in the spirit. And everything that has been said, I command that it must come to pass for you by the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is releasing speed. Now, please hear this. I want to pray. I know that I always pray for this, but I'm about to pray right now. There is a very strong anointing and it's coming on people inside and outside. There are people who have compassed certain realms. God wants to shift them. Please help them. As that anointing comes, sometimes they are going to begin to run by the Spirit. Just run like this, inside or outside. Father, I'm the... Ah, my God. I decree and declare right now by the Spirit of God the grace that brings speed 10 years in one 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 by the Spirit of the living God I command speed for you 10 years in one in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare speed, 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 speed. Speed over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare it. You are not wasting your time. You are receiving speed. In the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you are a pastor come it's time to enter a new dimension step into a new level of grace I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus I shift you into a new realm in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing the anointing of the Holy Spirit going to the media stand. Just that media stand. I'm seeing, and it's still the same grace for speed. I'm seeing media stand. I'm seeing that grace. There are people entering strange realms of speed that God is bringing. I release you by this word of prophecy. Step into that dimension. In the name of Jesus, no power in existence will stop you. Hallelujah. My dear, come. This lady on red. Come, quickly, please. I'm seeing you laughing in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord is saying I should release you to your seasons of laughter. 
in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over you and I declare whatever must happen in your life for laughter to break out I'm declaring to you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God let it happen to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ there are two ladies and three gentlemen the real grace for the prophetic the prophetic I will do an impartation by the end of the Sabbath but two ladies and three men a real grace real grace the eyes the eyes to see I quicken that grace quicken that anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost hallelujah grace please don't think we're wasting our time we're going to pray for the sick my dear come this lady God is visiting your family come and stand here where are your people where did they stay Samaru. in Samaru here let me tell you the month of September is a strange month of lifting for your family you believe that let me pray for you father in the name of Jesus Christ See, let me teach you something you see the word of god is very powerful believe it believe it don't, don't sit arguing and saying will god touch me will he change my life no god will more than surprise you father in the name of jesus i'm praying for this lady and i decree and declare The Lord grant you this miracle in the name of Jesus. The Lord is touching someone at overflow two. Overflow two. And the Lord is saying he's taking reproach away. Taking reproach. I'm seeing the power of God come upon someone. Overflow two. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow two. hallelujah we're going to pray for the sick shortly but i'm seeing wow usually i would not i would not be the person to talk about these things but when god does it uh where we, we serve his purposes i'm seeing a grace for miracle a lot this is why i kept quiet because you will be surprised that means you will see a lot inside a lot of monies there was no transaction to have necessitated it now god does not do this to sponsor laziness but it's a prophetic dimension this is what i just saw i declare by the spirit of god father every once and again you do this in this house to bring glory to your name i pray by the spirit of the living god right now in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. For many of us, what will come upon you will, will take away financial pain, financial shame. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, what do you do? Come, this man, this. What do you do? A businessman. Sir. A businessman. Where? In Dandumis, sir. Come again. Dandume, Dandume, Katsina State. Katsina State. Yes. I want to pray for you. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. Don't let anybody, don't be embarrassed, eh? Don't let anybody tell you to do anything diabolic for business favor. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. I yes, hope you're not embarrassed. Yes, sir. Let the, don't let anybody tell you that this is what he did that worked. And you too, you should do it and customers will come. It's not true. Listen, let me tell you, Paul can plant, Apollo can water. It's only God that brings increase. I want to pray for you. Father, what's your name? Sunday. Naemeka. What's that? Is there a name like that? Naemeka. Naemeka. I'm 
hearing that name i will pray for you sir but the lord is bringing i'm seeing the lord bring a very strange miracle to the person with that name in the name of jesus i take away stagnation from your business i release you by the power of the holy spirit into abundance and into plenty in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing the hand of god coming on several people for ministry but listen now this doesn't mean that you just get up and go and start doing ministry but the call of god has been lingering on your life and it's time to answer that call i'm stretching my hands lord i don't know where these people are overflow one overflow two overflow three online in the main auditorium here father anyone that your call up is upon his or her life i'm praying oh god confirm that call right now and let them know that it's not just their imagination i declare by the anointing and by the spirit of god draw them into their various callings into the various mantles the trainings the seasons that they must enter in the realm of the spirit to become mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ What's your name? Okay, I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, may God grant you speed. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, huh? I take away everything in your mind that will stop you from being productive. I shift you to experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We'll pray for the sick now. But I'm seeing a ring in the spirit. Enter the hand of a lady and then the ring breaks almost immediately. Now you know that this is already, it may be symbolic of marriage, but a disastrous thing happening that just scatters it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm praying right now. That anything that will push you into marriage to only last months old, in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing an anointing, my God. Come for direction. Especially geographic direction. The Lord is showing me that there are people who came here praying. They don't know exactly where to be based. This is this this sounds funny but the lord there is an anointing that is coming giving you clear direction in dreams visions prophetic intuitions some of you are saying lord should i stay should i go should i travel should i stay in the country out of the country i'm praying right now the grace for accurate direction in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. We're going to pray for the sick now and all kinds of situations that don't represent the counsel of God. We have to pray and trust God. We're going to do this very, very, very fast. I keep seeing something in this front row just these people in front I kept ignoring it but I don't know what I'm seeing I'm seeing something that God is showing me everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was lost Restoration shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen. There is somebody here. The Lord is bringing an anointing into your life. You are getting into oil. Listen, listen I'm serious now. Please listen to what I'm saying. This can be a life and death prayer. You see, 
this spirit of death that is just sweeping around killing people like chickens all around someone will just say headache and fall down and die i pray for you in the name of jesus christ i forbid the earth from receiving your body i forbid the earth from receiving your body and i declare every spirit of kidnapping whether in zaria here kaduna that will just allow wicked people to come and kidnap innocent people we we cause that spirit and we bring the perpetrators under judgment two more prayer points were done the dimension of the demonstration of the spirit signs wonders miracles the gifts of the spirit i call that dimension whatever dimension is missing in your life i speak to you please hear me especially if you are in ministry right now and here tonight step into that dimension dreams visions the prophetic the gifts of the spirit being activated in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone who is weary you are tired life has just wrestled with your spiritual fervency and it's as though you are about to give up it's like the grace to continue is not there by the spirit of god i supply fresh fire for the journey every leader here whether a campus leader prayer group leader bible study leader church pastor whatever kind of group i pray for you the dimension of grace that will keep the fire in your groups your fellowship burning i supply that grace upon you now we prophesy over zaria We speak to the spiritual borders of this city to fight anyone coming into this city to cause trouble or cause confusion in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you every request and every issue that was the reason why you came here I agree with you in the name of Jesus that the next time you come here it will be to testify in the name of Jesus and any man who says over his dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered this night Thank you jesus let me pray the last prayer of restoration i just sense it in my spirit whatever has left your life that should not have left whether it's money you lost money you lost friends you lost valuable relationships in the name of jesus christ by the spirit of god i call it back into your life now i call it back into your life now the Lord you are here and you are saying apostle we are late but we cannot close this meeting without giving me an opportunity to hand my life totally to Jesus please let's minimize movement this for me I believe truly without exaggeration is the greatest miracle I know that there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle i want to make my ways right with jesus you are here overflow one two three four i want to give you an opportunity in two minutes please run overflow three now you can just move to your projector stand and overflow four because of time but if you are here overflow one two two b and then online please make your way here quickly let's celebrate them as they come 
You're saying, Apostle, I want to win that war. My friend, keep stretching your leg carefully, eh? You don't have to... Yes, you, the man with the crutch. Keep coming, quickly, please. If there are people coming from outside, please clear the way for them so that they hurry up. Clear the way very quickly for them. Hallelujah. You're joining them. Please join them quickly. I believe there are still more people. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you and telling you to not let this meeting. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that calls men to repentance. Praise the Lord. If you're joining them, come, come quickly. Now, I salute every one of you. Thank you so much for making this decision. For those making this decision online, we salute you. Very quickly, I will request that you lift your right hand and please pray after me. Do it truthfully and passionately. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please join quickly. Please clear the way for them. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight, I declare that I cannot help myself. I declare that I believe that you are my savior you are my king you are my lord tonight i receive by faith the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in this life from today and forever i have eternal life I'm a child of God, forward ever and backward never. Amen. Please keep those hands lifted. Father, we thank you. The Bible declares that whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Thank you for bringing this one, so God, to make that declaration. We declare according to the authority of scripture that a new life begins for them tonight. A life of victory, a life of grace. In the name of Jesus. We thank you because they will go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Now, there's a gentleman waving his hands at the back. Please, all of you, just follow the gentleman in concert. And there will be a group of people to receive you very quickly. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again